small space living is a real thing right now, but it normally refers to interior rooms. But making small outdoor spaces livable can be a real benefit too. You just need to know what you're doing with what you've got. I've got some simple and easy tips, and it doesn't have to be hard. Oh, wow. Makes a difference, doesn't it? Fantastic. Yeah. Much better. Australia, this is Sharon. This Hi. is her house. Look, it's a, it's a small space. It's not particularly nice, but it does have potential. Good. Yes. What do you want to see changed and how do you want to use the space? OK, so right now, as you can see, there's nothing much I can do with it. There's no space. There's a dirty great washing line in the way. I'd love to be able to entertain, get rid of some of the crazy feral foliage over there. Yes, and perhaps the brown fence can go? Hate the brown fence. Yeah, Absolutely good. Yeah, hate we'll fix that. the brown fence. Yeah. So when you've got a project like this, the best place to start is to rip it all out. OK. But good with me. You're going to help me. Show me where to start. OK, let's I'm get all to yours. it. <laughs> We planned that. Good work, we did. Look at that. Oh, it's amazing what a couple of hours' work does, isn't it? Yeah. You had pretty much all the wrong plants for a small space in here. It wasn't me. A jasmine that had completely taken over. Big strelitzia palm. They look great when they're small, but they just keep getting bigger and bigger. And yep, they had to go. But I want to really maximise the space. So all this wall's going as well. We're going to go back to the fence line. OK. Need a hand? Come to help. I have. I know you don't like the brown. We're not sanding it off, don't worry. Like, it's not like the deck. We're just giving the fence a little bit of a key so when we do paint it, it sticks to the fence, doesn't just flake off. Okay. It's really important with a metal fence. Right. And the colour, as you can see down here, is quite a dark grey. OK. Now, I selected this for a couple of reasons. One, if you, your eaves and your guttering are already in a grey, so it will tie in nicely with those. OK. And secondly, having a dark colour on the fence is going to make all the greenery we bring in really stand out. OK. Need a hand? Yeah, well, the sanding is finished, so I'm going to leave you to paint. Okay. And we're going to get on with some paving. Cool. For the area off the kitchen, we're going to be putting in a barbecue, and for that, we need a nice solid base. So I'm going to put down some paving. The base for our paving is this crusher dust with cement mixed through it. We're just going to compact that down. I'm getting it as level as I possibly can because that makes putting the paving on top much easier. Once you've got your compacted road base down, I'm just laying my paving on a wet mix. That means it's going to go solid and these pavers aren't going to go anywhere. I'm leaving a bit of a gap for some pebbles as well because by adding some textural interest to the edge of the garden, it draws the eye out and makes it feel bigger. Another trick I'm using is a light-coloured paver. Now, this bounces light around, but it's not on the vertical surface, so it doesn't bounce in your eyes and feel uncomfortable. So the deck, the easiest thing to do to it would be just to paint over it, but it would look really flat and boring. And because you've got a small space, we want to add as much interest as we can. It is more work sanding it back, but you can see just by cutting in the edges, we really get that lovely texture of the grain of the wood when you stain it. Have you ever used one of those before? I've ridden one. No? OK. It's, no, that one's obviously <laughs> lost its magic. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when you're applying really nice, clean, strokes okay. and keep going all the way to the end of the board so you don't get if you stop it dries out and then you get a horrible mark so okay yeah. all right. I'll keep cutting in oh wow just showing off <laughs> no. I've been busy sanding okay Nice smooth timber. I'm thinking we're going to have a bar outside the kitchen window, like okay. a servery, and it's going to wrap around here. So okay. 
Loads of room for a table and chairs, but when you're entertaining a lot of guests, you've got extra space. Right. Good. Excellent. Yeah. First things first, though, we've got to get these brackets on the wall. Thank you. Straight in. This will test my skills. If you're working with a mitered corner like this, it's a good idea to drill through this way, and that holds it together before you screw from the underside. I'm building a couple of planter boxes in this garden, and for different reasons. This one to house our golden cane. Didn't want to dig it up and get it lower because it would just suffer, so we're building a nice bed around it. It's going to get lots of fresh soil in there and we can add some more planting. The second one further down in the garden is to add a bit of vertical interest to the space. If you've just got one, it stands out. If you've got two, the whole space feels like it was designed together. You'll notice with the sleepers I've used, I've just given them a bit of a light sand to soften the edges, and that ties them in nicely with the bar. So we've got two boxes and the bar, and they all need staining. Shaza! Sharon! You rang? Yes, perfect. With brushes. With Let's brushes. Let's get staining, hey? There you go. All right. If I was to stain all the timber in the dark charcoal, it would just get lost and you wouldn't see any of the features. Just using a clear coat on this treated pine really going to bring out the grain and make the most of the timber work. We are on to the best part now. Sharon, we're on to the plants. OK. So I've started with some golden canes, because you've already got one, so it makes sense to, to match them in. They're going to give us vertical height and give us a little bit of privacy back. They're also really good bang for buck, so they don't cost much for how big they are, because oh. they come in a small pot. So they're going to anchor us against the fence and the rest of the planting is a combination of texture and green to go with our nice dark fence so it's really going to stand out in front of that always start when you're setting out with the biggest ones and then work down to the small ones perfect okay any questions no nope, let's All go right. All the plants we're using here are really shade tolerant this is a Dianella that can take full sun. In full sun, it goes a really dark purple, but in the shade, you get more greenery. And the purple turns to a bronze, which looks perfect against our fence. This lovely little fern is called Blue Star. And you can see why by the colour of the foliage. It's got the silvery blue colour, which looks amazing against all the dark that we've brought into the garden. Now, you can grow this indoors, but it'll grow outside just as well. Just keep it well watered. So as nice as your old clothesline was, it was at that sort of decapitating height, wasn't it? <laughs> and it took up the whole garden. Oh, dick, yeah. So if it was out, you wouldn't want to come out. So this fold-down one, it gives you a bit of practicality, but when you've got guests around, you can close it away. It gives you much more space. Fantastic. So, Sharon, just a few really simple jobs done in the garden, and it feels much bigger, doesn't it? Such a transformation. I feel like I've got my own mini resort. <laughs> it's absolutely fabulous. Very, very spoilt. It feels like we're on fire. Well, you've got the bar, you've got the servery, bench seating by barbecue, still got plants, still got washing line, table and chairs, and plenty of space. Thank you so much. I feel very spoilt. Pleasure. Chin chin.